I made a poll on my community tab and I asked you guys if you would be interested in learning how to make Lego renders inside of Blender and you guys said yes. So I'm going to be showing you my step-by-step -step process on how to make scenes like this and this. Okay cool. So step number one is well first thing you need an idea of what you're going to make but step number two is okay so step one number one is your idea. So in my case, I want to make Ludwig, who is a pretty big streamer and YouTuber. And how I did that. Step number two is getting a somewhere where you can actually build your models and then export them into Blender. So what I used was a site called Megabricks. So I'll pull that up so you can see like this. This is Megabricks. And what you can do in here is you can build Lego. So, as you can see at the bottom, we have where all our bricks are, and you could go through a bunch of different ones over here on the left. You can search for bricks, so if you can't find it in there, you can go search it up on Google, find the, like, the serial number of it, and type it in there and get the brick. So, yeah, let me just show you the basics. So, step number one, you just click on a brick that you want. Um, so, here's a one by six. And then you can see we have uh, like a axis, axes, so we can just drag this and like this. If you want to duplicate, you just press D and duplicate it. So you can drag it over. And then if you want to rotate, you can use your arrow keys. So if I go left, you can see it rotates like this. So I'm going to duplicate it in and then rotate. So twice in the arrow keys and then drag it like this. So duplicate D, duplicate like this. Okay. So what you can do and then like obviously you would want to I don't know, make like a door so then i'm going lego door so you can see like this i'm like oh, i want this door frame and then you'll see you can see the, the serial number and you just go paste it in and you can see it pops up like that and then you can just drag it over and put it like there okay and you're just going to go through this whole process to build your room so you can also get like plates so these plates uh, to get like the ground plane these will never line up so you always have to line it up inside a vendor you can get doors doors don't line up either for some reason you always have to just uh, correct them inside a blender um, and yeah so you can just go through this whole process what you can do when you're filling up your room which is uh, I didn't even know about this so a lot of my pro I have to just make all my models but you can just go Google and search for something you want. So say you wanted, I don't know, like I, I, for his project, I wanted a Christmas tree. So I went Christmas tree, Mecca bricks, like this, okay? And you can see, then you have a couple Christmas trees pop up. So then you go click on them and then you like, cool, do I like this one or not? This is actually the one that I used and I really liked it. Like there's other ones, like this one's more simple, so maybe you want this, so you click on editor, okay? Then it should open it up into a 3D thing. Now you can customize it, so remove stuff, like say you don't want this ground piece, and cool. So there, uh, let's select something, so everything, so I'm just going to press B and select everything, and then just drag it down to the ground, like that, okay? And the way you get your models going from Megaworks to Blender is you go File, Export, and changes to OPJ, okay? And press export. Now, it will download as a zip file, so you just have to extract, uh, send it to, save it to your desktop. Um, if you don't like save your file on the browser, it will just be untitledmodel.obj and untitledmodel.mlt. So just change your names if you want, and then extract them to your desktop or wherever you want, okay? B uh, both the MLT and the OBJ. Then, step two, so as you can see, this is what I used to make Ludwig's room. So you can see it's pretty simple, I just have two windows, so like window frames, I don't even have glass inside of them, because I just uh, added in later. As you can see, I just had like some roof beams, two, four walls, add a door in, the doors over here, because I'm going to line it up later, and I wanted to remove these little cross beams. And then I just, for the roof, I literally just took little base plates, one of these like six bar 12 or something, and then just slapped them down, rotated them, and it created a roof that looks pretty decent. And you didn't see the roof that much, so it was more just there to block light and reflect and whatever. 
Okay. And then I just meant file export as OBJ and then import into Blender. So, so as you can see, this is what I kind of came up with. So as you can see, it's the same uh, house that we had inside of Bricks. And I've just added some textures. As you can see, to import your files from Megabricks to Blender, all you have to do is press file, import, and then you can see like OBJ, okay? So as you can see, I built these couches all from scratch, um, which I could have saved quite a lot of time if I just figured out that you could just find a bunch of them online and just download them or and change them if you want. But yeah, so I spent some time making my own uh, chairs and stuff like that. As you can see, uh, it doesn't have to be very precise. It's like this is just a lamp. It's like I didn't even add a flat top to it. I just made three of these. Um, and then they just float in midair because you can't see it. So it doesn't really matter. I wasn't going to make any other views because I'm, this is a stream room. That's how he always puts his camera. Like, I mean, even these plants are just floating yeah, in midair doing the same thing. Um, these lights, these Christmas lights are literally just curves. And then I put little studs and they just took an array modifier. So you can see I have an array and a curve. And then it just follows it like that. And then I added some thickness to the curve, and there you go. I got some nice uh, lights in the background like that. I also did the same thing for the tree, so you can see they had they already had like pre uh, had some like decorations. I just took all of those, added a mission texture, and then duplicated a couple of them to give it some red. So you can see in the background it just or like a different colors. I uh, set it up with a random texture, so you can see random to a color ramp. So you can see that creates a random texture in the background. So it just shows up and it just gives it a bit more variety instead of just having laughs. And then he had like this uh, little flag with mango nation on it. Um, I didn't want, didn't spend much time with texture, so I just left it like that. Um, it's literally just a normal like brick that you would put down and just UV unwrapped it and put it on top. Uh, as you can see, the chair is just the same thing, just the same like Lego pieces. It's just floating, I don't really bound, it looks okay. And yeah, the textures are cool. I just add some like dark colors for like the bottoms, the sides, and the bottom. Uh, some more plants over here, you can barely see it, but uh, it looks nice. Then the same, the chair, I actually reused it for when I made Pewter Pass setup inside of Blender. Um, and I just changed like the back of the chair a bit, uh, so it's still there, but it isn't as tall because Ludwig doesn't have a super tall chair. And yeah, that's kind of most of it. Um, I added some lights. So it's literally just a brick and then another light over here. And then just had another light over here that's just like slightly orange. It's like a bounce light. Uh, I can show you. So if I didn't have that light, I'll just make the whole side darker. And then this main light, you can see it just adds kind of like this so it's just nice to add it in um you won't be able to see this like objects they don't show up inside of eevee so i just that's why i've added the second lot but it does show up inside of cycles so when i get the background blur is you go to your camera settings so you go to select your camera uh where's my camera camera go to camera object uh camera, camera settings and what you do to set up uh what's it depth of field is you click on depth of field but yeah so you go to your focus object you can set the distance but focus object is a lot simpler and then i just added it empty you don't have to do this but i just added it in because i'll plan to do like animation didn't really get around to it but whatever so you can see that it will focus onto this object um you can change the f-stop which basically is the aperture so aperture is basically how wide open the camera is the wider open is more background blur more light will be let in so like this camera is being recorded at f2.8 uh, i've changed it to a very low number over here to 0 0.5 which you don't really get in a lens but it's just because like the setting the scale and stuff is all wrong but yeah so just change it until it gets something that looks correct and like that so you can see if i wanted to change my f -stop, you can see it makes it super dark, but then if I bump up the brightness, that you can see the background isn't focused while I am in focus. Whereas I drop it back down, 
like this, you can see the sim slide background. Also, that your focal length, the pen, like your focal length and uh, aperture, your app stops, does work together in harmony. If you have a higher focal length, you'll have more background blur. So if you have a super high focal length, like something like 100 millimeters, like this, you can see minus 20, which is quite wide. So I don't have that much background blur inside. That's why I have to lower the number so much. Whereas if I had, I'll just show you now, if I drag up this focal length to like 40, you can see this is how much it becomes really good. So you have, you can drag the f-stop back up like that. So like 0 0.9 and it still looks quite cool. So yeah, you don't want to make it too much like this because then it's just completely out of focus, everything's out of focus. Um, so I think 0 0.5 looked pretty cool. But yeah, so it just gets some nice effects and stuff like that. To make your characters. So I did the same thing. I literally just got the character that uh, from Mechabricks. So I actually just reused the same one that I used to make PewDiePie. Um, I changed the hair slightly um, because I didn't want to have the same hair. Um, actually, it took me quite a while to get the hair right and the face right. I use Affinity Designer. So I just went, so it's basically just circle, circle, most of like other circles. And then I'll show you if I can find the file. But yeah, so I use that. And then his shirt, same thing. I just took the mogul moves like design and looked it up on Google, found it. And then I just put on his shirt. So it's just a simple UV unwrap. And yeah, all this is done. So, okay. So as you can see, this is what it kind of looks like. Um, I did remove the mouth because I, changed, I set it up in a different land file for animation. Um, so I didn't need the mouth, I had like a sprite sheet of different mouths, but you can see it's very simple, it's just like, you can see it's, it's four points, well it's like a there, and tape it off, so I mean I can even just like move around, so you can see I can just change it all, and then I just curve the edges, so I just mounted this tool, and you can see you can bevel the edges of everything, and then you can see the R's are just literally just circles like this, more circles, and then just like a mustache, you can see it's just another mesh. So to do these inside of Affinity Designer, you just click on the pen tool and you start drawing. And then you join it together, you can change the color of the main thing, like this. And then if you want to curve it, you click on this little corner tool, and then you drag them in like that. So I'll put a link down below to Affinity Designer if you guys want to try it out. There is like a seven day free trial if you do want to do it. They're pretty, they're, they're not cheap, but compared to other software, it is pretty cheap. So it's 50 pounds a month, or it's not 50 pounds a month, it's 50 pounds for Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, or oh, 50 pounds each, and they work together pretty well. I use them for my thumbnails all the time and anything 2D that I need to do, and I think they're great. So if you do need something that's cheaper than the Adobe Suites, I definitely do recommend them. Um, but yeah, let's go back over to Brenda. So as you can see, also like with this microphone, I literally just did the same thing. So I just UV, UV unwrapped um, the thing, and then I just mixed the image with a mix with the color. And you can see, so I can change the color uh, like this of the microphone and the image. I can also move the image if I wanted. So like that and scale it and stuff like that. So it's pretty flexible workflow and yeah. Okay guys, so that is kind of how I make all my Lego renders. If you would like to watch my video where I kind of broke down how I made PewDiePie setup, you can click right there. Cheers.